Welcome back to Sunday Night Spookies, a podcast dedicated to exploring the mysterious and the spooky unknown. My name is Lex. And I'm Sarah. And this is episode three, Wendigos and Skinwalkers. So just a quick disclaimer, like usual, um, these legends are both from Native American culture. And we are not very well versed in Native American culture. So if we've missed anything really important or you want to let us know something, please educate us. Let us know on our social media. Get in contact. Um, because we didn't know about these legends. Like, we, I've heard of the term Wendigo and Skinwalker. I've heard of those terms. Mm-hmm. But I had no idea that it was Native American to begin with. Right. No idea. Um, so we're going to start with the Wendigo. And the translation means the evil spirit who devours mankind. This originates from the indigenous people from around the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence River areas. Uh, The Wendigo is said to be the spirit of winter. And I think that's because when you think of winter, you think of like cold, barren, dead things. All the, you know, plants have died. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's supposed to symbolize the dangers of selfishness. And the main characteristic of the Wendigo is the insatiable hunger for human flesh. Despite their undying hunger, Wendigos are exceptionally thin, and their bones and skull protrude through their skin. Sometimes they have antlers or horns, and they have sunken eyes, bad breath, body odor, and sharp teeth. Something that I read that kind of freaked me out was that Wendigos get bigger every time that they feed. And I assume that means taller. Taller. Is there a limit? <laughs> like, I wonder I don't know. if there's, like, a limit to how big they can get. I don't know. It's kind of terrifying. The Algonquian legend describes a Wendigo as a giant with a heart of ice. Sometimes it's thought to be entirely made of ice. Its body is skeletal and deformed with missing lips and toes. And that's kind of similar to how the Ojibwe people describe it. They say it's a large creature as tall as a tree with a lipless mouth and jagged teeth. Its breath was a strange hiss, its footprints full of blood, and it ate any man, woman, or child who ventured into its territory. And those were the lucky ones. Sometimes the Wendigo chose to possess a person instead, and then the luckless individual became a Wendigo himself, hunting down those he had once loved and feasting upon their flesh. Ooh. It and they're supposedly lipless because they're they're so hungry for flesh that they'll just gnaw their own lips off. Like I read that a lot. And that's like a huge like anything that I read that described what they looked like always said it was lipless and that's because they will just gnaw their lips off. The general belief is that if you take part in any dishonorable or taboo activities, then you run the risk of being turned into the Wendigo. Like they can target you for that. Um, Or something interesting that I read is if they, if you see them in your dreams, like if you dream of these creatures or they're constantly visiting you in your dreams, then that's a sign that you're being targeted to become a Wendigo. Yikes. Yeah, I'm going to be paying close attention to my uh, dreams from now on. (laughs) According to most legends, the Wendigo starts out as fairly human-like, but over time it gets progressively more monstrous. And I was able to find two different legends that suggested how, like, the first Wendigo came about, how it even started. Um, The first version describes a lost hunter that got lost during a really cold winter and couldn't find any food, um, so that led him to cannibalism. And since he took part in cannibalism, that drove him to be a, quote, crazed man-beast who forever wandered the forest in search of victims. Uh, The second version describes a warrior. In this one, um, this one was more interesting to me um, because a lot of the stuff that I was reading, Wendigos were associated with winter. And this one isn't like that. This this version describes a warrior who had, like, his specific tribe was at war or had, like, wasn't at peace. And he ended up making a deal with the devil or an evil entity of some sort in order to regain peace in his tribe. Um, He was transformed into a man beast or a wendigo to ward off other disturbances from, like, getting to the tribe. And then once the tribe was... Like, once the peace in the tribe was restored, there was no need for such a horrible creature, and he was banished to the forest. And then, I think he, he was, like, bitter about being banished to the forest, and he, since he made a deal, he couldn't undo his Wendigo form. Um, so he, then he was, like, banned to the forest and was, again, forever in search of his victims. Wow. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, because, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I was reading was, like people who have taken part in really bad activities then were turned into a wendigo or like in the winter 
a lot of association with winter. And this one I thought was interesting because it was very different. But this story came up quite a bit. Well, you mentioned that seeing a Wendigo in your dreams is a sign of being targeted. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not good. And I'll tell you why. (laughs) Tell Um, me, please. I will tell you why. Um, Once a Wendigo chooses you for its next feeding, they will stop at nothing to catch you. They have the ability to trigger ice storms and tornadoes to kind of push you in the direction that they want you to go to kind of trap you. A whole... that. Yeah. What kind of magic is that? Right. Tornadoes and ice storms, man. Mm-hmm. Something that makes that a little bit more terrifying is that Wendigos are completely unaffected by the weather due to their drive to find and consume their food. Human flesh. Wendigos will bait you by shrieking, growling, or even mimicking human voices, such as those of your friends or family, to lure you in. I've heard of stories where people are... Like, they live near the woods, and they're like, I swear I could hear my brother in the woods, but I know it wasn't my brother. It was a monster. Yeah, there's no way that it could have been my brother because I'm alone out here or whatever. Right. And I didn't know it was that. But also, if things are shrieking and growling, I don't think I'm going in the woods. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> I will leave the woods as soon as I can. They also have ungodly speed and endurance, and their senses are completely unmatched. You are also not safe inside your house because they have the ability to unlock doors. After which... Once they've gotten your doors open, they will kill all of the inhabitants and use that space to hibernate. Oh. Even if you are fortunate enough to escape, you'll be locked inside of your own mind. You will be completely vacant with no sense of self left. So to kill a Wendigo, there are very specific rules. I don't think I'm going to go out and kill one. I'm like, well, if you found one, you'd have to kill one. Or if it finds you, I guess is the better way. I guess like it's either death or attempt to kill, right? Yeah, so you got might as well might as well pick one. Um, so you would need a silver bullet, a silver blade, or a silver stake to put through their ice cold heart. Their heart must be shattered and placed into a silver box, and then after that, you have to dismember the remaining body parts, burn them, and then scatter the ashes. And the only cure for a Wendigo is death. There's no oh. bringing them back to human form. It's over. I wonder if, since you have to put their heart in a silver box, I wonder if you left the heart outside of the silver box, if it would, like, regenerate itself. Yeah, that's... Oh, I read good. that <laughs> if you don't follow the, like, the instructions exactly, then There's you should have even started because it's going to pull itself back oh together. God. All right. Yeah. So, one of the things that we wanted to touch on is that a lot of Western culture has gone to Native American culture for inspiration for spooky, scary, paranormal stuff. Um, And the Wendigo and Skinwalker specifically are things that Western culture has tried to pull into their own culture. And I, I was reading a lot of articles and a lot of Native authors and Native people were mentioning that Western culture doesn't always get it right. A lot of Western culture over sensationalizes the Wendigo and will over exaggerate and sometimes they don't always give credit where credit is due so we just wanted to touch on that that do your own research again wendigos and skinwalkers specifically most of the information that's readily available through like tv shows and movies and stuff isn't completely accurate and while the wendigo with native people is still associated with greed and selfishness today it's also been attributed to colonialism and capitalism which i thought was fitting fitting yeah (laughs) i i could definitely see how it is taken on that persona so now i'm gonna share a story that i found on reddit from bloodhunter 62 it's called a wendigo broke into my house before i begin i'm a 16 year old male About three years ago, I was in Virginia visiting family over the summer. We were right outside the DC area and staying in a two-story house near the freeway. On the other side of the freeway was a forest, so my mom, her boyfriend Eric, and I were all staying with Eric's parents. We had brought some night vision binoculars and decided that tonight was the perfect time to use them. So after dinner, we geared up and headed out. We pass under the freeway and head into the woods. When we get about five minutes into the forest, we set our bag down and take out our binoculars. My mom looks around with them for a while, seeing a few squirrels here and there. She gets tired of them and passes them to me. I look around for a while, being careful not to look at the freeway for fear of being blinded. 
I spot something behind a tree about 50 feet to our left. I concentrate on it, trying to figure out what it is. It looks like a pale, bald, frail man looking straight at us from behind the tree. I get a bit uneasy, but I'm hesitant to believe it's really there. I ask Eric to take a look, just in case. To my despair, he sees it too. He describes it much the same way I did. Now, Eric is a former amateur boxer and I train MMA almost every day, but neither one of us wants to stick around with that thing. We start heading back to the house, crossing under the freeway. We take another look behind us as a car comes by. All three of us see glowing eyes lit up by the headlights on the other side of the freeway. We say, fuck that, and head back to the house. When we get back, Eric's parents are asleep and my mom and Eric go upstairs to the guest room. There's only one guest room, so I have the couch downstairs. I'm a little too excited after seeing the thing in the woods, so I end up staying up all night. Around 3 a.m., I'm watching TV and start hearing footsteps above me. I immediately remember our earlier encounter and panic a little. I try to calm down and tell myself it's just one of the dogs or maybe someone who can't sleep. I keep hearing the footsteps for a while until I hear a doorknob jiggle. I find it weird that they're trying to open a locked door, but try to ignore it. They stop, walk around for a few more minutes, and then it's quiet again. I stay up until the sun starts coming up and then pass out. My mom wakes me up and I remember the footsteps from the night before. I describe what happened and ask if one of them got up at any time. She says no, and I think it must have been one of the dogs. That is, until she tells me the room above me is the office. No one was in the office, and the door stays locked at night. My heart sinks as I piece it all together. I don't know if it was that thing for sure, but I think it was. I've done a lot of research since then, trying to figure out what that thing was that night. I found two creatures that seemed to match it. I think it was either a skinwalker or a wendigo. Whichever one it was, I'm just thankful the door was locked. I know I wouldn't be able to fight that thing no matter how tough I am. Yikes. The end. The response that the mom gave, like, oh, it must have been the dogs. My dogs don't jiggle doorknobs. <laughs> like, Mine either. So that kind of concludes everything that we have about Wendigos. Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump right into the legend of the Skinwalkers. Yeah, and just a little mini disclaimer in this section. Um, Skinwalker has gained a ton of popularity in this recent few years and i think when i was doing my research for this I, like a lot of stuff for skinwalker ranch popped up and i have never watched the show i don't really know much about it other than there has supposed to be supposedly skinwalker sightings there um as, as long or as well as other paranormal alien-esque stuff that happens on this ranch and we're not saying we don't believe in skinwalker ranch or the things that have happened there, right but <laughs> over sensationalized like it's it's a huge thing and i like a lot of again when i was researching all of this stuff a lot of native people were quoted in these articles saying that like Western culture kind of takes this stuff and runs with it, and it's not always accurate. Mm -hmm. And Skinwalker Ranch, specifically the show Skinwalker Ranch, and, you know, the ranch as a whole, um, was mentioned quite a lot in this part of the research. So, this is this is what we found. We tried to be as accurate as possible. Again, if there's something that we're missing, please let us know. We're very curious. Um, so, the Skinwalker specifically comes from the Navajo people, and one thing that I found really interesting is they don't really like discussing it. That's because they feel like they're that talking about them makes the Skinwalker more powerful. And I got this from a Navajo person that had like chimed in in this article I was reading, and it said, to talk about it is to believe it. To believe it is to give it power. You're feeding the Skinwalker by talking about them, almost speaking them into existence. Once you've spoken about it enough, they will act like a stray dog that you fed and will come back over and over and over. And I thought that was a really good description. And it makes a lot of sense as to why they wouldn't want to talk about it. And right. I can like equate that to really religious people don't really want to talk about demons very often. So I like I thought that was an interesting point to note before we actually really get into it. And we're going to speak about it, so that's hopefully we don't get tired. It's, it's risky business, <laughs> it's but risky. we're here for educational purposes. Yeah. Um, so the term skinwalker is used to describe what the Navajo people call, excuse me for my pronunciation, yi naldlushi, but it translates to, by means of it, it walks on all fours. And some traditions state that the skinwalkers are born from benevolent medicine men who've used their indigenous magic for evil. 
And other traditions believe that anyone can become a skinwalker if they commit an act so awful or engage in taboo so foul that they it makes them lose their humanity. It's also said that the medicine man, if that's how you become one, um, is granted mythical powers of evil in exchange for committing those acts. So he would use the, his, you know, his given magic because he's a medicine man for bad purposes. Then he would get more power because, hey, you committed these evil things. We're going to give you more evil power. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that that's what makes them able to possess any other animal or any other human. Yeah, skinwalkers are most commonly seen in the form of coyotes, wolves, foxes, eagles, owls, or crows. Any typically predatory animal. And they choose the animal that they want to possess or transform into based on any tasks that they wish to complete. So if a task needs speed or endurance, stealth, or even claws, they'll choose those animals best equipped for the job at hand. For this reason, it's taboo for Navajo people to wear the pelt of any predatory animal. So instead they wear sheepskin, buckskin, or leather. That's pretty interesting. I didn't, I I, I guess I, I, this makes me sound really ignorant, but I didn't know that there were specific animals no, me either. That they were allowed to to use like that. So that, that's that's really interesting to find out. Like I'm glad that I know that now. Like, oh, that that is why. Like that's a cool that's a cool little fact. Right. And although they can be seen in animal form, they also have the ability to steal the faces and voices of different people, including those that you know. So that's a little bit similar. Similar to the, to the Wendigo. Wendigo. Take in people's voices and voice their own them. Mm-hmm. Um, when they aren't in animal form, they are most commonly described as hollowed out dog like creatures. Yeah, all the reading I read was talking about how, like, even if they're in their human form, quote unquote, they look really animalistic. I kind of picture it to look like, and I don't know if this is wrong, but I kind of picture it to be like Professor Lupin from Harry Potter. From Harry- yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's how I like, I guess, because that looks. Because that's a more hollowed out dog. Well, because he human-esque. transforms into a werewolf, which isn't like completely wrong. Like, yeah. Disconnected. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, if you lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can enter your body and control your actions. Oh, great. Yes. So when you're in the forest, keep your freaking eyes on the ground. Yes. But if you want to tell if a creature is a skinwalker, you have to look at it, have to look at it in the eye. Well, so <laughs> so you're screwed like, yeah I, I don't know um skinwalker eyes glow like an animal's when they're in human form so like you know when you like shine a light in an animal's eyes it completely reflects back to you yeah but it doesn't if you're a human yeah yeah but it does that when they're in, in their human in form. their natural quote unquote. quote unquote natural human form but when they're in their animal form their eyes are very human like that's interesting yeah I wonder why that is. Um, they are able to run incredibly long distances in one night, sometimes up to 200 miles, and they Good can God. dig up graves very quickly. This is important because they like to call up the spirits of the dead and reanimate their corpses to attack their enemies. So they're like necromancers. It's pretty intense. The skinwalker kills out of greed, anger, envy, spite, or revenge. It also robs graves for personal wealth and to collect much-needed ingredients for use in black magic. Much-needed ingredients. Much-needed ingredients. These transformed medicine men live on the unexpired lives of their victims, and they must continually kill or they'll perish themselves. That's interesting. So I guess, like, the Wendigo had to keep feeding, and skinwalkers have to keep killing. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. Skinwalkers and the like have been long blamed for all manner of unexpected struggles and tragedies throughout the years, including sickness, drought, poor crops, and sudden deaths. Even smaller or individual problems such as windstorms during dances, alienation of affection by mates, the death of livestock, and the reversal of fortune were often believed to be the work of a medicine man. It is said that the only way to kill a skinwalker instantly is to shoot them with a bullet dipped in white ash. However, there's an alternative way to kill them. If you say their human name, it's thought to bring back some semblance of humanity. And after that happens, they will wither and die over the course of three days. That's pretty interesting. I wonder why three days. I almost wonder. It's a slow, it's a slow, painful death. Yeah, I almost wonder if like saying their human name makes them feel like guilt for what they've done or like. 
it, it just like pulls the it pulls slowly. the humanity back in. Death by guilt over three days. Or Basically. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I mean that's what that's not the only thing I can think of. Is like if you say their name, or like, they'll like wake up, quote unquote, or like you know. Right. Your humanity comes back. So I'm just like, is like any like goodness you had left comes to the forefront. And you're like, oh wow, I really. <laughs> Mess that up. Mm, I messed that up. So now I'm going to share a Skinwalker story. This is from the Queen of Horror 666 on Reddit. Great name. It's called The Creature, and it's a true story. To give you a little more insight about me, this story happened when I was 14 years old. I was at my friend Emily's house since back then I lived there for personal reasons. Anyways, it was about 1 a.m. and her parents were gone for the night at her grandma's house. We were watching horror movies and vegging out on snacks like we usually would every weekend night. Same. Yeah. Still do. Yep, always. <laughs> After our movie, I got up to pee and let her know I'd be back. She nodded before opening up her laptop to message her boyfriend at the time. As I walked down her barely lit hallway and came across the bathroom, I heard Emily's voice call out to me to her back porch that was on the right side of the hallway which immediately struck me as odd because i never seen her leave the room or even walk past me. And why would she be outside anyway? Her voice called to me again, so I couldn't help but walk out to the back porch. It took a lot to scare me, so I wasn't bothered by this. Turned out to be the biggest mistake ever. A red flag should have went off right then and there when her voice became silent as I stepped onto the porch. I called her name softly, but she didn't reply. I called her name once more, but this time louder, and again, silence. I stepped off the porch onto the grass looking into her wooded backyard, a little pissed now because at the time I figured she was trying to prank scare me like she usually did. It was normal for her, but when I yelled her name again, a voice spoke, but it wasn't hers. It was another woman's voice. Help me, please, for the love of God, help me, I heard a woman scream. Okay, now I was officially freaked out because there was no one around for miles besides her one neighbor that lives a little ways into the woods. I found myself not being able to move. Curiosity, maybe? but the bushes started rustling and what looked like a dog stepped out. My first thought was it was her neighbor's dog that must have gotten out again because it's happened before. But when this thing stood up on its hind legs, it was about seven feet tall. That's when I really froze up. What the hell was this thing? I asked myself. I never met any human that's that tall in my entire life. When it started to stalk towards me, I eyed it carefully. It was walking kind of like a human, but wobbling like a baby taking its first steps. I found myself not being able to bolt out of there like I should have. I couldn't move. That is, until I heard the slider door being opened and the real Emily's voice speak. Lana, what are you doing out here? I looked around my whole house for you. As soon as she finished her sentence, I bolted as fast as I could and pulled my friend inside before shutting the door and locking it while closing the blinds. I did this to every room, even the basement, locking the windows included. All the while, Emily was yelling at me, asking me what the fuck was going on. I took her arm and raced into her room before slamming the door behind us. When she finally realized how terrified I was and how badly I was shaking, only then did she ask me, Jesus, Lana, what's the matter? You look like you just seen a ghost. What the hell happened? She asked. I finally calmed down enough to begin telling her what I encountered, but before I got the chance to fully explain what happened, I heard extreme banging on my friend's window, which stunned us both, and we both shot up at least 10 feet in the air. I whispered, fuck, when I realized I forgot to shut her blinds. I didn't have the heart to turn around, but when Emily's face went pale, I didn't have a choice but to look behind me. I really wish I hadn't. There that thing was, looking into our bedroom window. I couldn't even begin to explain what it looked like. All I can come up with is that its body was twisted like someone that had just been in a freakish car accident, and it had fur. Lots of it. And the eyes glowed much like a cat. A high-pitched noise escaped the thing's throat, making us not only cover our ears, but we both screamed as hard as our lungs would let us as well. I threw my friend on the floor before zooming into her parents' room to get her dad's 42 rifle. But when I came back, the noise stopped, and the creature was gone. Emily was rocking back and forth, holding her knees close to her, shaking and crying hysterically. She had seen its face as clear as I did, and the antlers that it happened to have. To say we were absolutely terrified would be a major understatement. The rest of the night, we all had all the lights on in the house, and we stayed huddled together in the living room with the rifle right under my legs. Finally, after what seemed like decades, the sun rose and her parents walked through the door. Almost instantly, her dad noticed our fear-stricken expressions and his gun under my legs. They sat down and softly asked us what happened. When I explained it, they shared worried glances before announcing that they were moving. We never asked why. We were just happy to get the hell out of there. 
We moved that exact day to my family's vacation home in a very populated city with little to no trees. When my parents got home and we told them, they had the same reactions and told me I could never go out after dark alone and to stay away from wooded areas. Of course, I never questioned it. To this day, I don't know if it was a skinwalker that some people believe in or if it was an imposter. What I do know, though, is that it was not human. I... That... (laughs) First of all, the the only thing that has come to mind right now is the fact that this girl threw her friend on the floor in front of this thing and then went to go get Just, a gun. Yeah. I'm taking you with me. Like, right. I'm not leaving that room <laughs> without I'm not a, leaving by myself. Like, <laughs> right. There's power in groups. Yeah. And so you have to go together. I just... I just... I... That just reminded me of... <laughs> we would both just be sitting there on the floor just like, all right. Crying. Just, that reminded me of side note sorry uh my mom and her friends and one of my friends went to like a really popular haunted house when i was in high school and my friend was like really brave and she was in front and i was like behind her like holding onto her shirt Mm -hmm. because my mom stupidly said my name in a haunted house so all of the actors are just screaming my name and this one guy comes up and is like really close yelling my name and I literally <laughs> threw her into him and took off <laughs> and I ran through the rest of the haunted house. That's right. Sorry. Side note. But that's what it reminded me of. So you would have just thrown me I think so. I wouldn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> flight or flight. Yeah. I t- uh, clearly I have the flight response. Same though. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. So these are the legends of the respective tribes and the groups of people. Um, obviously, we ha- really didn't have any knowledge before we started. We hope we did it justice. It was really fun for us to learn about other cultures and the legends, and it was it was really interesting to learn about. Um, but if there's anything you want to ask or clarify or you just want us to know, please reach out to our social media. Please educate us. Let us know. Um, we'd really appreciate it. You can find us on Instagram at Sunday Night Spookies. We are on Twitter as well under the handle at Sunday Spookies. And you can find us on our Facebook page, Sunday Night Spookies Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Sunday Night Spookies. Join us next week when we recap and share our findings from our on-location investigation of my house. New episodes are released every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Thank you so much for listening, and as always, stay Stay spooky. spooky. Peace, bitches. It's all fucking good. That's done.